we're going to talk a little bit about the basics. That's why I'm here, is to talk about what needs to go on in ofrenda. First of all, let me explain there's a difference between an ofrenda and an altar. People have altars in their homes. They have altars in their um, negocios, in their, in their uh, stores and like that. They uh, might have a, an altar in the corner for the Virgen de Guadalupe that has items in it. Or if you're Chinese, they might have an altar to the Buddha with something. Uh, and so people have altars and it's a, a method of worship. The ofrenda is technically not an altar. We use that word interchanging, but the ofrenda is an offering because it's actually a celebration of life. It's a time when we remember our ancestors and when they're alive with us again and when they're part of our life and it's a chance for us to tell the next generation about those who came before. So this is an ofrenda and we have various elements on it. It's not complete, but it has some of each of the elements that you will need to put a traditional ofrenda together. So you, we have ours in terms of three levels. One, which represents, of course, the ground, the earth, and the rooting of, and, of our ancestry. The second one, and the third one, is considered the cielos. And this is where we would put the images of our family uh, that we're remembering, because we know that they're in los cielos, and they're coming to visit us for this term. So first of all, the dates. There's a lot of different dates. People celebrate it differently. But when the conquistadores came to the New World, they brought with them their Catholic religion, the Christian religion with All Souls Day and All Saints Day. And they proceeded to convert the indígenas here, who already had deep reverence for their ancestors and, and already many different kinds of celebrations and, and rituals that had to do with life before, life now, and life after. So they eventually combined them on the dates of November 1 and November 2, each date being specific to an uh, age group. Dia de los Todos Santos, or Dia de los Inocentes, is November 1, and that's when it's expected at, um, at midnight. The old belief was that the, the souls of young of people who passed away as children, who are still inocentes, the, the todos santos, that they will come and visit and they'll be attracted by the, the bright things on the, on the ofrenda. On November 2nd is Dia de, lo, uh, de los Muertos, or the adult souls, who then would come and join as well. So the items here, I've combined both uh, Offerings for November 1, Dia de Todos Santos, as well as November 2, Dia de, de los Muertos, or Dia de Muertos. So we're going to start first with them. You need to represent the four elements. Wind, air, earth, and water. So in this particular presentation, we, have, we already have air because you can see the papel picado, which represent air, are demonstrating that we have uh, a breeze coming through and that it's alive and that it's bringing us life. So we have that representation here. Um, with the earth, we have food, fruit, um, uh, and such for, that we bring to the ofrenda so that we can have a feast with our, uh, in our celebration with those from before, those who are visiting, as well as those who are here. And I will explain what we have here in a bit. So then we have water. Must have water for, to have life. And so we have water, ladies, we're brewing the water. You can see that we put some water on the stage for it um, uh, in sim symbolic welcoming of the souls that have had a long journey to come here. We also have, um, I left out earth, wind, water, and fire. I did not put any candles on here. I have one white candle over there that I did not light, but it's there just to show you that you, the candles represent the fire. Fire being, um, um, representing passion, creativity, um, destructive energy, uh, many different things and, and complete with the air, the water, the earth, and the fire. You have all four elements on your altar. So um, it, we do have a cross here because this is um, a Catholic area and so we put the cross, but normally there are not really, um, for Day of the Dead, uh, religious uh, icons on the altar, but that's old-fashioned. Nowadays, you see people putting them on, even uh, even in Mexico, and it's appropriate because if it's part of your family and part of your heritage, then of course you need to put them there. Most people already have an altar in their home if they're religious, and, and so they don't replace it with this ofrenda. They'll have a separate ofrenda. 